Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are going to see the difference between mitosis and meiosis. And what we will do is we will see both uh, the steps involved in both the methods simultaneously. We will put both of them simultaneously and see step by step what is the difference or you know what's happening in these two types of cell division method. So let's begin. Let's start with one cell uh, as an example and I have shown here four chromosomes. We know that we have 46 chromosomes, 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes and 2 sex chromosomes and you have homologous pairs of each chromosome, one coming from father, one coming from mother. So here I have shown maybe 2 from uh, black from father and 2 blue from mother. So now whether it is mitosis or meiosis, the cell is going to divide. So the first thing that should happen is the DNA will replicate because the cell is going to divide and each new cell should get the genetic information. So at the end of uh, DNA replication, what will happen? All the chromosomes have now duplicated and initially they are attached at the point of centromere. Okay. So the first thing that is DNA replication, whether it is mitosis or meiosis, yes. So let's check that. Now at this particular point, let's put mitosis aside for a second. In case of meiosis, after the DNA is uh, replicated, one very important event happens called as synapsis, okay? And what this means is all the homologous pairs, here we have taken example of four chromosomes, that means two pairs, all the homologous pairs of chromosomes are going to align together. Let's see how it looks. Something like this, all the homologous pairs would align together. And why does this thing happen? During this particular synapsis phase, there will be genetic exchange between homologous pairs of chromosome. Very, very important uh, event happening during meiosis. Now in metaphase, all the chromosomes are going to line up the equator. Let's put all the chromosomes in the center and see. So all the four chromosomes have lined up here individually. But what happened in meiosis? They are in homologous pairs. So when they line up in the uh, center, they are actually with their homologous pair. So can you see the difference? Here all the chromosomes are single, but here the homologous pair have lined up. Okay, these are the spindle fibers I have shown. Now what will happen? Anaphase and telophase, you know that these individual cystic chromatid is going to pull away and will be separated, right? But what happens over here? It is not the sister chromatids that are getting pulled, but here the homologous chromosomes are getting pulled away from each other. The second very important difference. In mitosis, at the end of anaphase and telophase, what will happen? Each sister chromatid is getting pulled and it is going to the new cell. So it's done. Mitosis is over. You have two daughter cells at the end, which is exactly the copy of original cell. Can you see? It has got all four chromosomes as the parent cell. What is happening in case of meiosis? The homologous pairs of chromosome have lined the metaphase plate. So at the end of anaphase, telophase 1, what we are seeing is, it is the chromosome pairs that are getting separated and that would go to new cell. But meiosis does not stop here because you see, this uh, chromosomes which are duplicated, they have still not separated. So these cells will undergo one more round of cell division and that is where your meiosis 2 is going to take place. Okay, so all the chromosomes have lined up the equator. Now anaphase 2 and telophase 2 would take place. But here now you can see the sister chromatids would get pulled and that would go to new cell. Now I don't know whether you can see this in camera or not. You have a little black portion over here in the blue chromosome and little blue portion in this black chromosome that is nothing but the genes uh, you know, which got exchanged during synapsis. So, see, at the end of anaphase 2 and telophase 2, these two chromosomes have come to one cell and these two have got pulled and gone to another cell. Same thing would happen with this particular cell. So, at the end of meiosis, there are four daughter cells that are produced from one parent cell. And let's compare these daughter cells. What we are seeing is, there are four chromosomes in the parent cell. But at the end of meiosis in the daughter cell, there is only half of what was present in the parental cell. Now let's come to our comparison. 
We saw that DNA replication is there in both mitosis and meiosis. That is the first step. The second event very important taking place in meiosis that is synapsis. But that is absent in mitosis, right? So it is absent in mitosis. They just duplicate and divide. But in case of meiosis, synapsis take place. And because of that, they are going to line together. The homologous pairs of chromosome are going to align together. Now, you saw the number of cell divisions. In case of mitosis, it divides only once. Whereas in case of meiosis, as we saw, cell undergoes division twice, right? So in case of mitosis, there is only one cell division. In case of meiosis, there are two cell divisions taking place. And how many daughter cells we are getting in each method? Here we are getting two daughter cells, whereas meiosis we are getting four daughter cells. Right. Now let's come to one of the very important thing that is the number of chromosome at the end of each process. We started here with whatever chromosome number, we ended up with the same number in mitosis. Now humans, we have diploid cells, we know we have 2N and how many chromosomes we have? 46. So in case of mitosis, the parent cell is a diploid cell and the chromosome number is 46. Meiosis is also the same, right? We have the parental cell which is diploid 2N chromosome number 46. But what about daughter cells? Mitosis, exactly replica of parental cell. Diploid 2N 46. What about meiosis? In meiosis, it is haploid cell. And the chromosome number is half, that is 23. Very, very important. Okay? So at the end of meiosis, we have each daughter cell having 23 chromosomes. What is the function of these two mechanisms? Why do we have mitosis and meiosis? Meiosis is only for gamete cells, right? It's only for sperm and eggs. That is why you have only half of the number of chromosomes because the sperm and the egg, when it fertilizes, it is going to mix the chromosome from each cell. At that time, your zygote will have 46 numbers of chromosome. So when it comes to meiosis, it is only and only for gamete cells. And everything except your gamete cell, uh, your skin cell, bone cell, liver cell, any particular cell, I would say somatic cell, would undergo mitosis. Okay, so function for mitosis is for somatic cells. So remember it this way, gametes, meiosis, everything else, mitosis, somatic cells, mitosis. So that's all for now. Hope this was helpful. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every Friday. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep learning.